Come on, you wanted to come out. I'll let you out. Come on. You're okay. Come on. You're okay. Alright, let go of stuff with your tail. Come on. There we go. That's a good mamba. Ah. Huh. This guy I haven't really been showing around simply because it had a very bad shed. Sorry. And uh, when they have a very bad shed, uh, they don't look so attractive. Um, you know, and such. Okay, okay, relax. There we go. Alright. Hello. This is a little tough by myself. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Relax. It's tough to keep everybody in frame, keeping the mamba happy, keeping my fingers out of the mamba's mouth. Mambas do have this uh, tendency to uh, climb sticks. They also have this tendency to wrap their tail around your hand, which is a very uncomfortable thing because it limits your possibility of unloading the snake and the snake hook very fast. Um, this is a young uh, eastern green uh, Dendroapsis augusticeps or augusticeps. Um, this, uh, sorry girl, this was my friend Joe's. He was nice enough to send it up to me. Uh, uh, Joe's the Mamba King. Let's see. Okay, I got it together. You know, it's a little tough. There's not enough room in here for all that's going on and, and keeping everybody in frame. any rate, uh, she's relatively uh, calm. Whoa! And swingy. Come on. There we go. That's a good girl. Uh, these these gals like greens like to go upwards. They're very abhorrible. Uh, abhorrible. Aboreal. Um, like I said, she had a bad shed because uh, she was in a, a bag in a crate uh, on her way up here uh, at a very critical time. Got dehydrated and uh, uh, subsequently was a uh, even though vast amounts of water sprayed on her, didn't make a, a whole lot of difference. Yes, that's my hand. Um, as you can see, she's not zooming around the room yet, but that could happen. Um, there's a nice view of the so-called coffin head. Um, greens are not like the blacks. They don't really let you know they're really mad until it's sort of too late. Um, but, you know, these guys uh, don't bite as many people in Africa as the blacks because these guys are in the treetops all the time and uh, very seldom come down where people can mess with them. Where the blacks are ba basically a terrestrial snake and they will, uh, they will go arboreal. Um, but uh, their venom is not as uh, potent, but, you know, people say, oh, well, that's, uh, that's more toxic. Uh, you know, which would you rather be hit with? Uh, a dump truck going 60 miles an hour or uh, a big lorry or, or tractor trailer 18-wheeler going 60 miles an hour? It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Dead is dead. All right, no, you can't go over there. Hello. Oh, well, instead she's going to come down the hook and visit my other hand, which requires me to uh, go over to the other side and get ready. It's really nice uh, when they don't do this at 60 miles an hour uh, because it allows you to uh, slowly go across and, uh, and remove your hand. Okay, now come on, focus on the snake. 
I said focus on the dendro aspis. Let me get my fat ass out of the way and see if that makes a difference. There we go! Dendro aspis cam. Okay, as she continues her trek towards the other end of the hook. My friend Don, who's been a, a venomous snake keeper at some major zoos across the country. Um, okay, my fingers are just a couple inches away, so I've got to get my fingers out of her path. Okay, um, my friend Don uh, says that greens are very, very gentle snakes. Uh, uh, he. Uh, they're uh, amongst his favorite of the Mamba family. Uh, right now we're working on a project together to breed uh, black mambas and green mambas. Uh, he has western greens, but uh, oh my god, they're a nightmare. They're not calm like the eastern greens. Eastern greens are the calmest. In the I guess if you wanted to have a pecking order, so to speak, of uh, the most wacky, you have the black mamba at the top of the list. They're absolutely ballistic uh, most of the time. Then you have the western green mamba, Den Dendroaspis viridis. Um, they go zooming all over the place, but most of the time they just want to climb a tree and get out of your way. But if you happen to be in their way, that's when uh, problems uh, usually happen. Um, you know, I'm trying to maneuver so you can see her clearly. Um, well, here, I'll just go back here since she's fairly calm. Um, oh, sorry. See, the slightest little thing can make them twitch, and then you twitch, and then they twitch again, and it can be uh, quite a vicious cycle. Um, they don't tongue flick very often, so it's really unusual to see a tongue flick. Uh, you know, you note how I've got the... Uh, oh, no. Just go down rather than come back on my hand. Okay. You you just relax there, sweetie, and uh, we'll be uh, in good shape. But no, she has to go forward. At any rate, uh, the most wackiest to the least wackiest is the black mamba, western mamba, then Drapsis uh, viridis, uh, then the Jameson's mamba, uh, Dendroaspis. Uh, Jamesoni, Kimosei, uh, and uh, on the bottom of the spastic list is the Eastern Green Mamba, uh, which we have here. Um, you know, I'm not likely to let her stroll around the room unattended like, uh, like I would Gabby, uh, simply because she's very slender, very fast, and can get into places to make my life very miserable. Uh, Gabby, uh, Gabby fortunately has the girth that there's very few places that she can go, um, but she still does and, uh, and causes problems. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Oops. Alright, now I'm not going to put you down on the table because then you're going to go zooming off into the sunset. Okay, well, that's pretty much uh, hmm, Eastern Green in the FaceTime. That's pretty much uh, well. I'll talk about the Eastern Green right now. Uh, no, no. Okay, my arm is not a tree branch. Thank you. Jeez, really making me sweat. Okay, well. Uh, 
she ate for me today. I can't wait to, to videotape and show you how she feeds. Uh, that's really, really quite cool. Um, here, I'll put my fingers here since she's not, uh, not terribly uh, uh, mobile at the moment. And she looks perfectly content to sit there. Um, she sort of fe feeds a little bit like a King Cobra. Uh, she looks down at it and actually she really likes movement uh, and she'll whack it once or twice and sometimes grab it. Now it's interesting the Eastern Greens also have a black lining to their mouth uh, which I happen to see why she was feeding so uh, I know this um, um, but they're certainly a very very pretty snake and uh, you know, this one's very calm. You know, I've had uh, green mambas uh, stalk me through the glass of their cage. Um, they can be really sneaky. Oh, come on. Sit still. Oh. Hey, look, girl, that's not me doing that. That's you. Yes, folks, please don't try this at home. Again, this is a snake that was you know, captive born, uh, Joe worked with her on a daily basis, uh, and this is the result, an animal that, you know, I can sit here with it on my snake hook and talk to you about it. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, 80% Joe's doing and working with the animal and getting it, uh, you know, not manhandling it, treating it with respect and, and lots of care. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, there we have it. We just have this uh, very lovely uh, Eastern Green Mamba. I have another one in the cage, uh, but uh, that one's wild caught, and that will take me some time uh, behind the scenes to work with her. Um, there's no way, no how, I would have her on a hook like this little gal. So, uh, with that said, and... We burned a lots of tape on this. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, and put her back in her enclosure, um, so you can uh, uh, not so you can so I can stop sweating and uh, continue off. People say I have you know mm, uh, big melons, uh, so to speak, between my legs. Uh, some people say that, you know, I've got nerves of steel. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, probably neither. But um, what I've got is experience and understanding, uh, which allows me to... Uh, uh, to sort of guess and sort of be aware of what buttons to push and what buttons not to push when it comes to these animals. I wouldn't, you know, the animal certainly isn't tame. Uh, as I said in a, in a post recently, um, the animal and the keeper are interacting in a mutually agreeable manner. Uh, the snake doesn't see me as a threat, uh, although this makes me sweat a lot when she gets very close to my fingers. Um, she's not very far uh, in my hand, but uh, uh, you know, it's it's mutual understanding and respect. It's not. Uh, you know, startling the animal or, uh, you know, uh, grabbing the animal with, you know, a pair of uh, gentle giants. Uh, you know, the only one that gets gentle giant treatment is my friggin' large puff adder. You know, that's the only thing that you can uh, work with. Uh, you know, these gals, you know, a hook, a broom, gently pushing them or a spray bottle in the face of water uh, or dihydrogen oxide um, you know is enough to uh, defend them off for the most part and 
you know, just makes for, uh, you know, a very enjoyable and very uh, um, uh, mutually satisfactory uh, uh, experience with these guys and not the sort of experience where you're uh, dialing 911 and rushing off to the hospital and making multiple phone calls on the way uh, to get the appropriate anti-venom. So with that said, I'm running out of tape. Let me put this girl back uh, in her home and uh, we'll call it a night. Okay there girl, come on. There you go. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. You know, she's uh, down off the hook in her cage. Now go on. Go on. I tickle her bottom. I bet I do that to all the girls. Um, to get her off the hook. Oh yeah, one other point I want to make. Um, if I, you know, wet her down, pinned her, or tubed her, and pulled off all this shedding, um, that would not make for a really good relationship. Uh, mambas remember, and I'm trying not to uh, have her uh, and I have a, a bad uh, uh, situation together. So I'm letting the, the shedding sit there. Her belly scoots are clear. You know, she can breathe, she can eat. She'll, uh, she'll shed it out very soon. So with that, um, say goodnight to uh, uh, Miss Mamba here.